For 99% of the population of Tamriel, they are told that Talos is a divine by people in power, but they don't know of the actual proof. So when the groups like Thalmor come along the way wanting to ban his worship, there really isn't the kind of proof needed to counter their claims, which leads to opposing views and eventually conflict. But what is the truth really? Who is Talos? Who is Tiber Septim? Who is Izmir? And who is Arctos? And who the fuck is lying? How to understand Talos in simple terms? Well, to understand simply, let's look at the Catholic Holy Trinity of the Son, the Father and the Holy Spirit, which makes up the concept of God. Now replace those three, except with healthy early beard, Urine Arctos and Izmir Ulfar, three distinct personas sharing one essence, that in simple term is Talos. It gets more complicated when you take Arcturian heresy into account, with the simplest explanation being that Izmir Ulfarth is pretending to be Tiber to make politics easier, so that he can act with the full authority of the Emperor on his behalf. Throw in Septim's own propaganda machine that rewrites his own past to make himself appear more glorious and you get a number of different public images that belong to one man who apparently became a god. Take the enantiomorph into account and Jurin Arctos, Izmir Ulfarth and Tiber Septim all become a part of Talos. Talos is still Tiber Septim, but in his accession, he absorbed Arctos and Ulfarth in a way. The mythic reenactment basically has all three switch roles, until you can't tell them apart anymore. But I think Talos is just Tiber Septim's soul, with merely the imprints of Arctos and Ulfarth. In the Elder Scrolls universe, the idea of names. Names actually hold power, metaphysical, magical or otherwise, and the sharing of names between three figures, Arctos and Yalti, both being Tiber Septim. Yalti and Ulfarth, both being Izmir, and Arctos and Ulfarth, both being under king, might actually be related to their oneness through the enantiomorphic structure. It's getting more complicated, I know, but just hold on, it will make sense. As for where it is discussed, once again, we have Vivek to thank for all this nonsense, and his sermon says, Vivek then saw the moth that would come from the starry herd, bringing with them dust more horrible than the ass of Red Mountain. He saw the twin head of ruling king, who had no equivalent, and eight imperfections rubbed into precious stones, set into a crown that looked like sackles, which he understood to be the twin crowns of the two-headed king, and a river that fed into the mouth of the two-headed king, because he contained multitudes. This passage raises question and reveals a recurring theme. Queen Alessia combined aspect of Caesar, the god of men, and Auriel, the god of time, to form Akathos, the two-headed king of Cyrodiil. However, this passage also alludes to Talos, a combination of Hyalti and another entity, possibly during Arctos. Vivek force or Tiber Septim as destructive and dominant force in Tamriel, naming him Tiber Septim. Another passage from the same sermon states, Orator and Sarmad, one and one, eleven and elegant number, which of the ones is the more important? Could you ever tell if they switched places? I can, and that is why you will need me. This passage, while not direct, seems to be alluding to the enantiomorph, albeit one between Vivek Nervar and the Agatha Or, which I would personally think of more like a failed enantiomorph, one which perhaps Vivek wished to construct in order to hide his betrayal. Sources on Talos's life and legacy, as I stated before, exhibits inherent bias. Imperial texts depict him as a prophesied hero, often for political or ideological reasons. However, other sources do the opposite. In the realm of divine judgment, one could argue that Tiber Septim's path to godhood resembled that of Raymond Cyrodiil, his predecessor. This notion implies that Tiber Septim became a cultural deity hero of mankind, much like Raymond. Certain sources, such as the cryptic Mantella rebuild letters, narrate a cataclysmic battle involving the new medium. In this tale, Tiber Septim and the enigmatic imperial battle maze witness their shared heart being cast away from mortal realm, thrust into the otherworldly expanse known as the Aetherius. However, this narrative raises perplexing questions. Tiber Septim continued to walk the mortal plane, ushering in a new era and reigning for several decades thereafter, and not the Aetherius. Why was he not considered living god then? What I aim to clarify, as I initially mentioned with the Holy Trinity, is an alternative perspective. In this view, Yalti Early Beard, also known as Tiber Septim, did not achieve godhood in isolation. Instead, it was a tri-headed entity, recognized as Talos, who ascended to divinity. This composite being encompassed elements of Breton Yalti, the Nord Izmir, and Imperial Arctus. Collectively, they merged into the emerging spirit of humanity, filling the void left by Lord Khan among the divines, and consequently, the pantheon expanded to nine divines with the inclusion of Talos. 
It is conceivable that the essence of Sur intertwined with that of Auriel when Alessia introduced Akatos as the principal deity in Pantheon. However, with Talos' ascent, humanity once again found a champion within Tamriel's dominant faith. This factor is a fundamental reason for the strong opposition from the elven races toward Talos, possessing the wisdom of Akatos, the heroic leadership of Tiber Septim, and the Lorcanic aspect embodied by Wolfarth. Talos encompassed the attributes needed to shape a deity capable of uniting all the races of men in Tamriel under a single banner. This might explain why depictions of Talos often portray him defeating a serpent with his blade, reminiscent of Lorcan, who is frequently symbolized as a serpent. It appears that Talos assumed Lorcan's role in the Celestial Order and in the hearts and minds of humanity. But the banner did not come at just conquest. Tiber Septim used the weapons of mass destruction on civilian population and the aspect of Lorcan, who is an eternal enemy to the elves, has more than one reason to reject Talos' divinity. While it remains possible that Talos was originally a single individual, and that Izmir did not bestow his iconic storm crown, or that Arctus powered the new medium independently of the Caesar, the legend of Talos is rife with inconsistencies. Therefore, I propose that figure known as Talos, or Tiber Septim, was not a solitary figure, but rather a complex persona with multiple facets, defying simplistic classification. The enigma of multifaceted Talos endures as one of the most beguiling enigmas within the Elder Scrolls tapestry. In the end though, a lot of lore surrounding this structure and basically everything that actually clarifies what it is, is held outside game themselves. But that's how it goes with the Elder Scrolls lore a lot of times. At the very least, we know that Arctos and Yalti were almost definitely Talos. It is not really disputable unless you have a very bizarre interpretation of how the warp in the West really went. And thus, Arctos' death allowed for the existence of Talos the deity when he was not previously present. And as always, I hope you have gained some insight and enjoyed your time here. And if I've been unclear or inaccurate in any ways, please feel free to let me know down in the comments. With that said, may the three-headed Talos guide you on your quest and I'll see you on the next one.